what scientific studies have been done on the environmental impacts of GMOs on our planet and food system? What did the study show? It's important to understand, before we go into the details of the soil problems and the, and the, the non-target insects, etc., that pollution of the gene pool is irreversible. If you introduce a gene into a crop and it cross-pollinates and you release it outdoors, for example, Starlink corn. I used to work at a laboratory that detected for GMOs. I was the vice president of marketing. I got a call from the laboratory director. We found Starlink corn in taco shells. And I said, test it again. Don't tell the client. It turns out it was illegal in human food and it resulted in a over a billion dollar recall and countries all over the world stopped importing U.S. corn because it might have Starlink that was a uh, medium light, uh, likely human allergen, medium probability, and it wasn't ever supposed to be part of the human food supply. And they found um, Starlink in, I think, 22% of all the samples tested that year. And after three years of very intense media remediation and whatnot, they still found it. It was only like in 1.8%, but they still found it in the gene pool. It's still in the gene pool. It may forever be in the corn gene pool. And as we introduce more and more non-GM corn, the percentage may go down and down and down, but it's still there. We can't do a hunt and gather, a search and rescue, a, an elimination. We can't do that with current technology to eliminate the gene that was inserted into corn that may be a human allergen, that may have caused people to have anaphylactic shock, that may still be killing people. So this is a kind of pollution that is unlike anything we've seen before. And it's a change not only that can affect human health, but it can affect the environment. Because again, if there's a change in that crop, in that species, it gives it a survival advantage, that gives it some other aspect it's there forever, interacting with millions of other factors in the environment. Now, what do we know about the environmental risks? Quite a bit. Roundup is doused on Roundup-ready crops. Roundup is an antibiotic. It kills the beneficial bacteria in the soil. It promotes fungal pathogens. So more than, I think, 60 different uh, plant diseases are rising in the U.S. because of Roundup, because it promotes fungal growth. It takes the uh, minerals out of the plants, makes them weak, which changes the whole ecosystem when, because the ecosystem that relies on the nutrients of the plants becomes weakened. Um, the Roundup can remain stable in the soil for years or decades, the longest reported half-life the time it takes for it to be degraded into 50% was 22 years. It's usually not that long, but it depends on the nature of the soil. Uh, it compactifies the soil, so it creates more runoff. This is Roundup. It has phosphorus, so that help, helps create dead zones, and that also runs off. The Bt toxin uh, can bind with clay and, and be stable for a long time. It can damage the ecosystem of of rivers and the marine, marine ecosystem because it damages the caddis fly and it can, tar it can influence the health of non-target beneficial insects. Uh, the salmon that's genetically engineered and sold in Canada, a similar salmon was found that when in, in a study in times of low food when they didn't feed it enough because it was growing so fast and was ravenous it would become aggressive and kill and eat its fellow salmon causing complete extinctions in the tank or uh, near extinctions. Um, there's so many different areas. I mean, I could go on and on because what we have here is a technology which changes the nature of the species, adds intense amount of poisons, um, and can even change the uh, fertility of the, of the soil. Sometimes after uh, Roundup is sprayed, after GMOs are, are planted, then the next generation uh, or the next crop that's, pl that's planted does poorly or is unable to grow at all. We've heard both situations. Uh, so it's, it's pretty extensive, the damage that we've already seen. And they want to introduce yet more types of GMOs. And so we're looking at potential catastrophes. 
In addition, you get these things where these afterthoughts. When BT toxin was introduced in corn, they discovered, oh, a certain variety kills monarch butterflies. So they quietly remove that. But then the Roundup Ready crops, they spray vast amounts in the Midwest with Roundup. It kills the milkweed plant, which is where the larvae are deposited and they eat the milkweed. So now that has resulted in a catastrophic reduction in the monarch butterfly, over 90% reduction, I'm told. Uh, and then they find that glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup, can cause damage to bees, causing bee deaths and inability to navigate back to the hive. One research group was studying this, and it was bought by Monsanto, called Biologics. So we don't hear about that research anymore from Biologics. So it's pretty comprehensive in how it can devastate. I think the last thing is that because it is an antibiotic, we have no idea how important the microbiome is. There are some scientists that talk about the efficacy of herbs and even of salad may be the microbiome on the leaves more than the actual substance, the particular microbiome. And I can have a whole discussion about that. But the microbiome can be wiped out by antibiotics. And the biggest application of antibiotics in the world is Roundup and glyphosate-based herbicides with, a, with an antibiotic that's known to kill beneficial bacteria, but not the nasty stuff. Tell us about the dangers of Roundup. Roundup damages the fundamental foundations of our health. If you look at the charts of diseases rising in the United States, more than 30 of them are rising in parallel with the increased use of Roundup sprayed on GMOs or on the increased acreage of GMOs. But Roundup in particular is, is identified as a likely cause of many of these particular diseases. Now, why is that? It chelates minerals, making them less available. And without proper minerals, there's whole metabolic pathways that just shut down. They go on strike. They do nothing without their cofactor mineral. So you have whole shutdown of very important things like the shikimate pathway, which produce the precursors to serotonin, melatonin, and dopamine. So now you may have a deficit of important neurotransmitters that affect your mind and your sleep and your pain and your anxiety and maybe schizophrenia. And all these are related to in terms of the correlative charts, which don't prove anything, but now we have plausible causative pathways that show how Roundup and glyphosate may be causing these things. So you have the mineral deficiency. It's an antibiotic. It kills the beneficial bacteria in the soil. It might cause a dysbiosis, a change in the balance of the bacteria of the body, which can lead to numerous diseases. It can cause gaps between cells in the body, turning our organs and tissues into sponges for toxins. And in the case of the gut, leaky gut. Leaky gut is linked to a long list of diseases, including autism, cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, autoimmune disease, inflammation, and allergies. It also is a probable uh, uh, class 2A carcinogen, and it's linked to many different uh, cancers. It also is linked to genotoxicity, damage to the DNA, and oxidative stress, which both can create cancer. It is a mitochondrial toxin. Mitochondria health is related to aging, to cancer, to all sorts of diseases, and it is damaged by Roundup. It suppresses digestive enzymes. It damages the the uh, villi along the intestines. It can lead to birth defects. There's been a great study on that. So it is, and it also can mess up our hormones, including the potentially the balance between testosterone and estrogen, which is very important. And it's linked to damage to sperm cells in mice, to high rates of death in lab animals. So we're in a situation where if you look at the nature of this molecule, which is unique, it's as if it kicks, it kicks the foundation out of our health. Because each of these things that I mentioned, from the mineralization to the microbiome to the mitochondria to hormones to neurotransmitters, these are the foundational elements of our health. And Roundup is sprayed on a lot of different crops, not just GMOs. So that's why eating organic is really important. And at rounduprisks.com, we have a little training there how you can get Roundup 
kicked out of your homeowners association, golf course, school, parks, cities, not just Roundup, but other toxic herbicides and be replaced by non-toxic cost benefit, cost beneficial alternatives. What you see is the importance of the Real Truth About Health conference. When Stephen told me he had an idea for a 10-day free conference called The Real Truth About Health, I was upset. I said, who is going to be coming to the conference for 10 days? No one has that time. Um, but what it's evolved to is a platform for release of videos. And you have as many as 300,000 now, 300,000 views for a single video. So I kept complaining, saying, I don't think it's a good idea. You don't want to bring people from all over the world and have a small audience and no one's going to be there for 10 days and whatnot. But it turns out in this digital age, I was wrong because it's actually now a digital platform. And it's a, for me, it's an opportunity to get to connect with people that uh, are on the same subject that I get to see while I'm here. So uh, I thank Stephen and The Real Truth About Health for getting the word out to large numbers. Even if we don't have thousands of people in the audience here, we have thousands of people in the audience there.